Hi, I'm Christine, and I'm part of the Living Seas team at Ulster Wildlife. This Wildlife Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about one of the world's most colourful invertebrates, the nudibranch, or sea slug. In the first session, we'll be looking at the biology and the behaviour of these fascinating little creatures. And I'll be using photographs and video of species from around the Northern Ireland coast to demonstrate this. In the second session, I'll be showing you how you can find nudibranchs, where to look for them both underwater and on our shores. The nudibranchs are part of a group of soft-bodied animals called mollusks. This diverse group of animals also includes sea snails, octopus, squid, and bivalves such as mussels, oysters, and clams. The two main suborders of nudibranchs are Dorid nudibranchs and Aeolid nudibranchs. Dorid nudibranchs breathe through a ring of gills on their backs that you can just see here. And Aeolid nudibranchs have finger-like processes known as carata, which are used for breathing as well as digestion and defence. All nudibranchs have a pair of head tentacles known as rhinophores and a pair of oral tentacles, which you can see here in the Aeolid and in the door, they are tucked away on the underside of the animal, and we can't see them in the photo. Nudibranchs don't have very good eyes, but they do have eye spots. These two little dark spots, which we can see at the base of the head tentacles, and these allow them to see light and dark, but not images or colour. The bright colours used by nudibranchs are not for attracting a mate. They serve as warning coloration to deter predators such as fish from eating them. With their limited vision, nudibranchs rely on their head tentacles to make sense of their environment. A pair of tentacles called rhinophores on the top of the head and a pair of oral tentacles either side of the mouth have scent receptors that help it to smell its food and to find a mate. Most mollusks have a shell which offers them some protection from predators. However, adult nudibranchs have completely lost their shells. The loss of a shell has allowed a huge diversity of different body shapes to evolve and this diversity of body shapes and colour patterns has led to them being called the butterflies of the sea. And here we can see a nudibranch feeding on a seafarer or hydroid. Nudibranchs feed using a radula. This is a specialised toothed ribbon-like band with hundreds of microscopic teeth and we can see it here on the bottom left. It's stained pink so that we can see it clearly down the microscope. On the right we can see the radula and how it gets moved forward and extended over the food and then pulled back into the mouth carrying food particles with it. In this way the nudibranch rasps at its food. Nudibranchs are carnivores but like butterfly larvae they're often very picky about what they eat. An individual species will usually only eat one kind of prey. They feed on animals such as sponges, and you can see here this little red nudibranch, Rostanga rubra, eating a red sponge. Sea anemones, and this is the sea anemone here with the nudibranch feeding on its tentacles. Corals, and this is Tritonia umbergii on a soft coral. Seafarers are hydroids. Although seafarers look quite similar to plants, they're actually related to jellyfish. And in the photo we can see the little feeding polyps which look like tiny upside down jellyfish. Some nudibranchs eat sea squirts. In this photo we can see the two siphons off the sea squirt and just sticking out of the side of it, the gills of this nudibranch, Okinia elegans. And this is the nudibranch when it's not when it's outside of the squirt. Some nudibranchs also feed on what, sea, what we call sea mats or bryozoans. This species of nudibranch, Onchidorus depressa, is so well camouflaged on the bryozoan it feeds on. Its skin matches the colour and the texture and the pattern of the bryozoan, and we can just make out two little head tentacles and a small circle of gills on the back. 
I'm just going to give you a second here to look to see if you can see the nudibranch. Now this species, Calma gubbio ufega, feeds on fish eggs. In fact, it feeds on just on the eggs of gobies. And the processes on its back look really similar to the fish eggs. And over on the right, we can just see the little head tentacles. This white zigzag pattern that we can see is the spawn of the nudibranch. And this nudibranch, Onchidorus bilamellata, feeds on barnacles. And sometimes we find huge numbers of these, both on the shore and in shallow um, water. Some nudibranchs even feed on the spawn of other nudibranchs. This one here is munching away on another species of nudibranchs eggs. And then some nudibranchs even eat other nudibranchs. Some nudibranchs and sea slugs are solar powered. Here on the left, we have a photograph of the green sponge finger seaweed. And there's a tiny sea slug that feeds on this called Elysia viridis. It can harvest the chloroplasts from the seaweed and store it in its skin. The sea slug can then obtain food from photosynthesis, just like the plants do. And we can see here the little green patches and this is effectively a solar panel on the back of the sea slug. With the loss of the shell, nudibranchs have evolved some remarkable defence mechanisms. And this is what first captured my interest in them. So let's have a look at some of the unique ways they defend themselves. Animals such as jellyfish, corals, sea anemones and seafarers or hydroids all belong to a group of animals called cnidarians and these animals produce specialised harpoon-like stinging cells called nematocysts. The nematocyst consists of a coiled barbed hollow thread and when triggered the barbed thread is discharged from the cell and can eject venom into their prey or be used to defend them from predators. Aelid nudibranchs such as this one that feed on cnidarians can steal these stinging cells and use them for their own defence. The long finger-like processes on the backs of aelid nudibranchs contain digestive gland and immature stinging cells that the animal gets from the food it's feeding on travel through the digestive gland to special sacs at the tips of the carata, which we can see here. So they're used for storing the stinging cells. And then if a predator such as a fish tries to eat the nudibranch, it will get a mouthful of stinging cells. Some nudibranchs are even poisonous to predators. They secrete um, toxic compounds. They ingest these compounds from the sponges or the sea mats or the sea squirts on which they feed. And they can store the chemicals in their skin, making them unpalatable or even poisonous to predators. This little white nudibranch, which you can see here, is feeding on this sponge. So the nudibranch is called Cadlina lavis, and the sponge is Dicidia fragilis. So Cadlina takes compounds from the sponge and stores it in these little yellow glands you can see around the edge of its back. And these compounds have been shown to have antibacterial anti-inflammatory and even anti-tumor activities and researchers are currently investigating the potential of the compounds that the nudibranch stores for new medicines. Some nudibranchs defend themselves by advertising their presence and this is known as warning coloration. You can see these bright colors particularly yellow so they signal to animals such as the fish that might want to eat them that the animal's inedible. And these are some of our more colourful nudibranchs that we get. And while some nudibranchs advertise their presence by being brightly coloured, others have evolved camouflage 
and they match the food they feed on really well. On the left here we have this branching sponge and there are three nudibranchs on it. The colour and texture of the nudibranch skin match that of the sponge really closely. And it even has little markings on it that resemble the exhaling openings on the sponge. Now this is another nudibranch that's really well camouflaged on its food. It's called Onchidorus oblonga and it eats this CMAT salaria. This little nudibranch is usually found wrapped around the branches of the CMAT that it feeds on. And the tubercles on the back of the nudibranch really resemble the texture of the sea mat and also the colour of it. And his little head tentacles here, his rhinophores, look similar to the tips of the branches of the bryozoan. Now I'm going to do, tell you a little bit about reproduction in nudibranchs. So nudibranchs are hermaphrodites. And that means they've both male and female organs. It also means that each individual of the same species that they meet is a potential mate. And when nudibranchs mate, we can see these two here on the left. They transfer sperm and fertilise one another's eggs. So the reproductive structures are on the right hand side of the body. So this is its head, this little head tentacles. And this is its reproductive structures and the other one's facing the other way. Like butterflies, most nudibranchs are very seasonal with annual reproduction and the life cycle is timed to coincide with the availability of their food. Adult nudibranchs lay thousands of eggs in a jelly-like ribbon close or near to their food. This video footage is of spawn was taken using a microscope so we can see details of the tiny larvae that are developing inside the egg capsules. There are approximately four egg capsules led neatly in each row and each egg capsule contains three tiny larvae known as feelagers. And if we look closely we can see that the feelagers have a shell. This is only present in the larval stage and is absent in adults. We can also see the ciliated ring or phelum which is used both for swimming and for feeding. Most nudibranchs have larvae that will swim in the open water for a short period before settling on the seabed where they metamorphose into juveniles. The small numbers of larvae that survive will eventually become next year's adults and so the cycle of life continues. So I hope you've discovered something new from this brief introduction to nudibranchs and their intriguing behaviours. And that you'll join me for our next session where we'll be taking a closer look at more of our local nudibranchs, including some rare species that we have here.